YouTube. Welcome to another episode of WFT Show. I'm your host, Justin Nickel. I am back from my uh, star-studded tour of Prince George and Smithers. Uh, humble brag, probably the humblest of brags, uh, but uh, it was good, uh, good to get away for a bit, but happy to be back. And uh, my partner in crime, uh, Mark, B, Mark B, just going to call him Mark B because he hates when I butcher his last name, uh, is here with us tonight. Uh, Mark, are you on the screen tonight or are you just the voice of God tonight? I'm not on the screen. Jeremy's back, so that's it. That's that's all. That's the oh, you're last... never coming? No, I'm you're never going to fill in. Never going to show my face again on this show, <laughs> so it's a pleasure to be here tonight. All right. Well, uh, because Jeremy uh, got his second prick today, he wants to take the day off because he not know if he's going to feel good or not. So we had, uh, as our guest uh, host, one of my favorite people in Vancouver comedy. I love working with this dude. He's uh, he kind of we kind of came up around the same time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Sam Tawning, everybody. Sam, what's up, man? Not much, dude. How are you? This is great. I'm excited. I don't even yeah. know what your answer is. I don't care. I'm just pumped. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to here to party. Here to talk about the news. Here to learn some things. Uh, Oh, I'm stressed out. All right. I can't tell if you're here to sell me a car or fucking convert me to fucking Juda Judaism. I don't know what you're doing <laughs> over there. <laughs> I'm not wearing my kippah, that obviously. Oh, uh, it's something, yeah, you're tuft in the back, kind of. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I'm here Shalom. to Shalom. All right. All right. Anyways, hey, good to have you, man. How you been? I'm good, man. It's great. I'm glad the world's opening up slowly but surely. You know, shows are happening. I had the pleasure of doing Comedy Brawl recently. What a show, man. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Like you that. almost did it. Yeah. I, you know what? Having got on stage is doing it enough for me, right? Great oh. audience, great time. Got to sell some jokes, tell some jokes. So that's, awesome. it, it's back, man. Well, we're going to have you back again because uh, I love you, it. you've always shown really strong. So, uh, yeah, so come check out Comedy Brawl July 28th, as you mentioned. Uh, do you got any dates coming up you want to plug? Oh man, I mean, I mean, tomorrow I'm at the uh, the Port Moody Legion. I, you know, I don't want to brag too much, but they have two <laughs> ten foot snooker Ooh, tables. That's hey, I got hot. the Maple Ridge Legion at the end of the month. That's fun. oh yeah, wow, uh, yeah, this is great. Yeah, we're really uh, spreading our wings. You know, <laughs> fucking yuck yucks is on hiatus. Next best thing, old fucks. Um, I'm joking. I'm a I'm a member of the Legion and the Army Navy Air Force Veterans Club. I I'm, I'm I really support the troops. But you just like meat draws. You just like meat draws. Just admit it. <laughs> I, you know what, man? Like I fucking rig the meat draw. You know. Of course like, you do. Well, you figure out the number. Do. Like how much did they spend on meat, right? And you think for each draw, maybe they're laying down a hundred bucks on meat. And and it, if I buy forty dollars in tickets, knowing that maybe they sell hundred, like I, I got a pretty good chance of at least making my money back, right? Especially if I steal tickets from people who don't notice walking <laughs> by or whatever, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It's funny about old people. Easy to steal from, apparently. Oh, Easy to steal from. Yeah. They say candy from a baby, right? But at least they're loud. The old people are so confused, they won't do anything, you know? <laughs> that? Easier than stealing credit card information from a senior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only seniors who go to the Legion, though, have maxed out cards, so it's not much luck. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I I, well, to... this is all jokes, Mark. You know, I can say this because I am uh, an idiot. And I don't mean any of it, please. I just want to protect everybody. And I want to say hello to everybody in the chat tonight. Hey, chat. hey we got. So I just want to say hello to Jess, our head mod. And I think the only moderator uh, tonight. So uh, everybody be nice to Jess. Jess runs the chat here. She actually runs the whole show. What she says goes. So if anybody, anybody dares get out of line here in the chat or with Jess, you're fucking gone in two seconds. I just want you to know that. I want to say uh, hello to James. James, we're going to talk about haunted paintings tonight. I hope you're excited. And uh, we have Vera Bobo in the chat, too. Hey, Vera, nice to see you. Nice. Uh, and Mr. Doopy. Do we know who Mr. Doopy is? Is it Doopy or Dopey? I don't know. It's, it's, there's two O's, so I don't know. Hmm. Well, he can answer in the chat. He'll let us know. All right, let us know um, in the chat. Is it Doopy or Dopey? Also, or Rob for short. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, also, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we're going to have a fun show tonight, and uh, these things just keep getting better and better, and you're going to want to tune in. And uh, I, I, we're going to have some fun with Sam tonight. Sam's been sipping. What are you sipping on tonight, Sam? I'm having a, uh, a nice uh, Spanish uh, uh, Garnacha <laughs> Carignana Syrah blend. It's it's wonderful. It's very approachable right now. Very approachable. The, the, the Campbell selection, it's great. Uh, uh, it's called... Uh, Spain Tinto. I don't know if, what the hell. 
It's wine. Listen, it's red wine. Listen, I just had an uh, awesome clip idea. Me and you review wines. I know nothing about wine, and yeah. you know everything. And when you, yeah. I just get hammered, and I piss you off. I, no, you're not going to piss me off, man. I love talking about wine no matter what. But I also came prepared here. I brought I brought two liters of water in case shit gets too hot to handle. You know what I mean? You know that fucking water bottle screams? It screams, I made a New Year's resolution to work out, and I'm going to quit in a week. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, I did make a New Year's resolution, Justin, and it's July, so I haven't worked out in seven months. It's pretty great. You still got a chance. You still got time. It's a slow burn. Never slow give burn. up. Never give up. There's, right. there's hope for everyone, and there's especially hope for Sam Toning. Do you guys want to jump into the first story you call here? me Toning, Mark? I've known you for years, and you called me Toning. I said, I said Toning. Mm. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. All right. Fake mean anyways. Who cares? <laughs> Hey, you said my fake name wrong, Mark, you asshole. Yeah, let's get into Hold it. Hold on. Let's keep going. That's, not, that's not public information. Everybody forgot you heard that, okay? Oh, okay. My uh, bad. Um, <laughs> I told, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I use a stage Shit. name. All right. Any minute now, two men in suits are going to show up and knock on Sam's door and drag him away. My bad. Oh, no. At least we'll see everything. <laughs> that's the good part. Yeah. We'll see it you all happen. I'll have an HD. <laughs> It's finally right. one of those great videos of like a Zoom call gone wrong that you'll get in high definition, right? That'd be instead hot. Of, instead of a kid running in embarrassing me, it's two cops. <laughs> well, maybe it'll find, this thing will finally go viral then. I mean, I That's sacrifice you in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's get in. Uh, if, any, right. if anybody wants to swat us tonight, uh, go ahead. I mean, if you want to send the cops to either of any of our houses, well, not yes. mine, but Justin's or Sam's, just go. go. No, I'm just joking. Uh, you're going to get they arrested for live. smoking inside, Mark. Oh, no, they, the audience can't see me, so I can do whatever I want. Well, wow. I said smoking crack. I meant smoking crack <laughs> inside. <laughs> Wow. First rule of fight club, Sam. Jesus Christ, buddy. Yeah, he's, t- he's taking everybody behind the curtain without our I permission. I got it, man. My name's been revealed. It hasn't. I don't know anything. I got to take, <laughs> take everybody down with me. We're breaking all the rules. All right. You want to get started, Mark, or is there anything else we need to cover? No, I mean, I just want to say uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, it's great to have everybody in the chat here. And uh, yeah. it's great to have the both of you here, uh, Justin and yeah. Sam. Have a great show. Thank you. Uh, right. First story uh, is a kind of a peculiar one. So there is a big event, a uh, big anniversary, or I don't know what you call it, but celebration, if you will, coming uh, up on July 17th, this weekend. It is going to be World Emoji Day. World Emoji Day. Okay. So we all use emojis, of course, on, you know, every, you know, whenever you text, whenever you send messages mm-hmm. on Tinder, whatever. Uh, there is one particular new emoji that's being proposed that is causing some controversy, gentlemen. There is a new pregnant male emoji that is being proposed as part of the new kind of the, the, uh, the, the, the arsenal of available emojis. Wow. I don't know, man. All I got to say is it looks like he's taking a shit. <laughs> like this, this guy's wincing like crazy you know yeah. he's, he's, his it, eyes are closed he, it's clear he had too much like uh pad food, tie. he had too much pad too, tie. too much pad tie i was gonna say something a bit less controversial like uh big whoppers or whatever they call them but you know pad thai works spicy. too <laughs> little little Jesus. chicken vindaloo or something i don't know or beef <laughs> lamb but they, yeah. this guy looks like he's just taking a dump there's nothing pregnant about him he's fat that's all he is this guy looks like me I'm looking right. at myself here. <laughs> well, oh, no. one thing when I see this emoji, I'm just like, well, this has solved everything. Like, this is the thing that needed to be pushed to the forefront. This is what needed a day. This yeah. is what needed an international day. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel better now after all the controversy and the yeah. turmoil. We got this emoji and I will be using it like nine times a day when I chirp my best friends, like in text messages, like when Shane Clark upsets me <laughs> or complains about stuff. I'm just going to send him the emoji of the pregnant man and be like, this is what you sound like right now. Well, you know, I look at this and I guess the kind of thing you you mentioned, Justin, like it's about time that this got its day. And I agree with you. It's about time men had their own day. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, man, for far too long. Don't cancel me from nothing already. (laughs) Well, that's ridiculous. I'm just kind of annoyed that uh, this had its day before like porn emojis had their day. Like, come on, man. I'm tired of using eggplant when I want to use the word dick. Like, let's just let's just be yeah. grown ups about this. Okay, like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Can we? Can I just subscribe to it? Can someone just make it and I just download it. No. What? Who are you sending like eggplant emojis <laughs> to? 
That's what gets me, man. You're like not just the dick. Not maybe the boobs. Maybe there's like a funny bush joke that I mean. I don't know. You know what? Can I back out of this? Yeah, Justin's really tired of all the ambiguity. Yeah, exactly. I just want to text my wife that I'm watching porn, okay? Like, that's all I want to be able to do, and I want to do it in a cute way. Right, yeah. right. Well, you know, good for like, you, Justin. No, you, like, the entire the eggplant, eggplant peach, eggplant peach, it gets old. It just gets old. Yeah, to some. <laughs> Listen, man, uh, all I know is that this definitely needs its day right behind uh, International Waffle Day and International fucking Pat Yourself on the Back Day. This is a, uh, are we just like turning over every year? Like you get a day once and then like the next year we start having new days for new things. Like who decides the international days of things? Can I ask that? How do I get on that panel? Because if I get on that panel, let me tell you something. International days are going to be fucking fire. Yeah. Well, I think what you got to do, man, you just got to say it's the international day of something and then make kind of like a cute drawing and have it associate with that day and share it on Instagram. Like, hey, seeing that it's International Blank Day, here's some things you can do to better educate yourself. But it has to be really drawn cute, right? Right, and, right. And then that's the way that young white women will share it. And right. And by then, it makes it true. And I don't care what your cause is, right? It could be some cryptocurrency scam or whatever. And and you're going to see success, man, because right. that is the way of the world nowadays is is young white women sharing cute drawings with a message. Right. Well, it has to have a finger wag element to it. Do you know what I mean? Like as, oh, if someone yeah. can share it and they can finger wag at people about yeah. it, then they're like, I'm on board. Oh, my God, I can be self-righteous about this, even though I'm the exact version of what I'm fucking finger wagging about. As long as I'm finger wagging, I'm not the problem. Well, what about like international? um Okay, no, I, I can't say anything here. Yeah, probably right. not. <laughs> well, yeah, be careful, guys. We don't want anybody canceled. We want everybody to leave the show intact. Uh, but we do have some comments, and the chat is open. You guys in chat, you, you're you all liable, by the way. Um, Mr. Oh. Doopy said that uh, to Sam, by the way, that's a big jug of vodka. So Mr. Doopy thinks you're drinking vodka there, Sam. Well, I've drunk worse. Oh, and that's why I have that emoji. <laughs> well, uh, James uh, or Vera says, oh, come on, we don't need that, referring to the emoji. <laughs> he's bloated. Um, so, hey, are you talking about me? No, he's talking about the emo uh, she's talking about the emoji. Uh, oh. Mr. Doopy then says, sleeping beer gut myself while asleep emoji. Maybe that could be a thing. I think so. I think it'd be a good. We'll have the international day of, of uh, Mr. Doopy's emojis. That'd be pretty good. Yeah. All right, gents, uh, okay, jump, jumping into the next story here. We had a, I don't know if you guys are fight fans. I know Justin is a fight fan. I don't know if uh, Sam is. Uh, I a like big boxing. Fan. Oh, there you go. So, well, this is not have to do anything about boxing. It has to do with uh, everybody's favorite asshole, yeah. uh, Mr. Conor McGregor. He had a big, uh, he had a big uh, fight, uh, and it looks like he had a little injury in his leg during the fight. Little boo boo. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this was, by the way, the second biggest pay-per-view in UFC history. Uh, it was Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor coming off a knockout loss to Dustin Poirier. So Dustin Poirier uh, decided, yeah, I'll fight you again since you're the biggest draw ever and I'll make the most money fighting you. Why wouldn't I? I just knocked you out. Conor McGregor talked a lot of shit, talked about Dustin Poirier's wife, which is just a huge no-no. You're trained fighters, you know, just don't do it, but... Connor thinks yeah. it sells tickets, which it probably does. Um, and uh, the fight goes off, goes off. Very competitive. Very good fight in the first round. Uh, Dustin Poirier is clearly ahead. And in the last 10 seconds of the round, Connor McGregor, uh, he, it's believed that he probably already cracked his leg in oh, some yeah. way or another and was fighting with, a, with an injury. But uh, he goes to throw a punch and misses. And he steps backwards and his leg just bends like a noodle, like just, just done, falls to the ground. And then Dustin decides, you know what, bro? Remember that thing you said about my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it right now. <laughs> gets a wow. couple more in, gets a couple more in. The ref fucking has to stop the fight. Uh, it's a win, uh, even though it's an injury. It's an injury that happened during the fight. So that is a win for Dustin Poirier. It's a clear win. doesn't matter. I don't care who you are, how much of a fan of Connie you are. That is a win for Dustin Poirier. Uh, ends the trilogy. And uh, and Conor McGregor, from his ass, is yelling, but this isn't over. It's like some Game of Thrones shit. Wow. Uh, then threatens to uh, the camera. They actually kept it on Conor. 
when they were interviewing Dustin in the ring, Dustin's like, he's a piece of shit. Fuck this guy. <laughs> like, just literally, like, no, there was, you know, usually at the end of a UFC fight, they love each other and they hug and they're like, mm. hey, man, you know, it was all in fucking making money. Blah, blah. These two did not bury any hatchets, okay? Uh, Conor McGregor can be heard from the ground uh, threatening uh, his his and his wife's life saying uh in your sleep i'm going to end you in your sleep and conor mcgregor has ties to the irish mob so oh, that wow. is kind of taken to be taken seriously and then he posted pictures of dustin poirier's daughter uh saying uh dunzo like what the <laughs> what is that wow this guy's a piece of shit hey <laughs> I don't it's know. almost like what did you say in the pregame what that he's irish <laughs> I am wearing a green tie. Don't come after me, Conor McGregor fans. Yeah, he's a psychopath. Uh, he's in the exact profession. If Conor McGregor wasn't a professional fighter, he should be a police officer. Uh, that would be exactly up his alley because he's a, a hot psychopath. Take? <laughs> <laughs> to serve and uh, mutilate. Uh, no, he, uh, he is one of a kind. He can't take the losing well. He's a narcissist. Yeah. Um, I liked him coming up uh when he was uh before he was champion now he's been champion the ego on that guy everything that's happened uh, i i can't stand him anymore can't stomach him dustin poirier was nothing but a professional uh, but the best meme that i saw made of it was uh when connor steps on his uh foot and it bends someone uh photoshopped him in stiletto heels yes <laughs> i was like Every woman knows that that is so incredibly accurate. And I thought that was the greatest thing. Oh, but, yeah. But after hearing all of this, Sam, would you pay to watch Conor McGregor fight again? No, I wouldn't pay to like, see Conor McGregor do anything. Well, because you're a fight fan. You're a boxing fan, right? I like boxing. I, I, I don't like, I, I'm not an MMA guy. And this is going to lose me a lot of fans. Right. It's but not. listen, they want to they set up the, the Pacquiao fight with McGregor. You wouldn't watch that? No. Why would I watch a guy who sucks fight Conor McGregor? No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, why would I watch Conor McGregor get his ass kicked by one of the greatest boxers ever? When I can watch, you know, fucking Friday night fights and see two guys who are really trying in the same yeah. martial art go at it, you know? Well, like, I'd rather watch Devin Haney all day. It's that simple. And he's, okay. his voice is so high, it's ridiculous. Right. So this is sort of an indictment on boxing now because yeah, I know it's ridiculous. the biggest draw on boxing is a YouTuber who's fought three times and he hasn't fought a single professional boxer and he outdraws everyone right now for pay-per-views in boxing. Isn't that well, insanity? Does that also outdraw every pay-per-view in UFC? Uh, well, the last one was 1.5. So like 85% of them. Yeah. 85% of them, 90% of them. So is that not also kind of an indictment on UFC that a, a, uh, a, uh, a YouTube star and a retired boxer still gets a better draw than 85% <laughs> oh of UFC fights? Oh it, would, it would be, it, it would, it is, I guess, but it's not as much of an indictment because they're not doing MMA. They're doing boxing, right? Because if he did yeah. the MMA, he would get murdered. He would get murdered and I would pay, I would pay for seven pay-per-views in one night just to see him get murdered. I'm so tired of that kid. Yeah, I don't even know what Paul brother it was. Sean Paul? <laughs> Logan, it was Logan. I don't That's the best enough. <laughs> uh, I was pumped for the fucking Fury Wilder fight that was supposed to happen, like not this weekend, but next. But it got postponed to October. Yeah, you know what? Boxing is the most rigged, weirdest kind of convoluted thing in the world. That's why I like UFC because it's one league, one promotion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This, this boxing thing's out of control. But back, bringing it back to uh, to MMA here. Um. Conor McGregor is now going to be the biggest villain in the world. So the beauty of what he did was every horrible, horrendous thing that he did this week is only going to make him an even bigger draw when he comes Fuck back. Yeah. That's the weirdest part of this whole well, thing. He's, he's playing the heel, right? Like to the yeah. extreme and that gets rating. Well, yeah. We, well, we have to be careful, I think, because just from the outside looking at, I'm not a sports guy, but I mean, boxing, MMA, if they don't watch it, there's it's going to become like hockey where they're just making it all up the the uh you know the refs are you know managing the game they're they're making sure the fans are entertained and it's going to just be like a fucking circus sideshow like the NHL yeah. uh some um some comments uh, Kevin Hank says if you go back and listen closely after Con uh, Connor broke his ankle you can hear Connor's coach John Cavanaugh telling him how good he's doing <laughs> 
I mean, that's that's uh, positive reinforcement. Uh, Vera Bobo asks Sam, why yes. the tie? Why the tie? Well, I'll be honest with you. Why the tie? Because I take uh, appearances like this. I, I put a I put a premium on being as professional as possible. You know, it's not my show. I'm a guest on this show, and it's an honor to be a part of it. So why not dress the part? You know. There it, takes, you go. it takes nothing for me to wear a nice tie, a nice shirt, and still sweat a lot and, and say dirty things, but I may as well do, do it while looking okay. You a know? consummate fuck, professional. Man, way to bring, hey, wait, hey, guest host, way to bring the heat to the fucking host of the show. Thanks, really appreciate it. I that. just thought I was a fucking guest. I didn't know I was a guest <laughs> host. Oh, yeah, you're here I am now. Right, I, like, I find out this week that the, the host <laughs> is gone, and I'm like, I got to fucking step up somehow. It's ridiculous. There's a brand new shirt. <laughs> yeah, yours is a brand new t-shirt i love it you got a hanes beefy tea good for you no right. the hank it's not a beefy tea i'm just fucking a 10 pound bag of sugar and a five pound bag i don't oh, need your boy. shit let's not start an ar argument about underwear sizes okay i don't want to hear it <laughs> we got a show to do okay you're welcome Vera. Right. okay so uh moving on to the next story gentlemen we got some great news out of australia so Oh, yes. Yeah. So it seems like um, shark attacks have been getting or sharks in general have been getting a bad rap. Of course, they'll uh, bite your leg off, your arm off, whatever, and leave you dismembered. Uh, but it looks like the Australian government is a little bit um, they want to kind of destigmatize the shark, if you will. And they've now ref they've now changed from calling shark attacks attacks to calling them incidents or interactions, negative interactions. And this is not a joke, by the way. This is true. So now, mm -hmm. whenever someone's going to be attacked by a shark, they're not going to be bitten or attacked. They're going to have a negative interaction with the animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, go for, I'll take the lead on this. How about we fucking name it human attacks? Because we kill like fucking 10 million sharks a year. Huh. And they kill what, like eight people a year? Coconuts kill more people a year than shark, uh, than uh, than sharks. Like sharks yes. kill like yeah, eight, eight to ten people or whatever. Coconuts kill like twenty some. Somehow twenty idiots hmm. die every year standing under a coconut tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> catch coconuts. So maybe we should start calling it uh, human attacks or people attacks on sharks. But also, when a shark attacks you, that shark literally is like, hey, what is this skinny bony? piece of crap and they're just kind of chewing on you to think like mm, do i want to eat this they don't yeah. even want to you know what i mean they think oh also too when you surf in the ocean and you dress up in black and you put fins on your feet and you look like a seal if a shark attacks you you ask for it you shouldn't have been wearing that <laughs> are you telling me that most divers go blackface that's what i'm saying they go seal face sorry i they just heard part face. of that i was i was too busy looking at jaws on the screen here Okay, stop watching shark porn, Sam. Stay focused, bro. Stay focused. Uh, Kevin no, Hanks. Seriously, Kevin Hanks says one mil one hundred million sharks killed every year by humans. Wow. One hundred million guys. I can't believe there's still sharks. Like how? <laughs> you know what I mean, here's the thing too. They kill them for their fins with shark fin soup, mm -hmm. right? Uh, shark yeah. fins are tasteless. Shark fins are tasteless. It's all about the broth of the soup. So really, you could put pig's ear in that soup. Same fucking thing. Same fucking thing. But nope, we got to eat shark or like, uh, I don't know, man. Like shark cartilage is believed to help lab healing stuff or whatever. Steve, look, if you really want to break this down, blame Steven Spielberg, okay? The minute okay. that fucking Jaws came out, everyone was afraid of sharks and everyone became a shark hunter, okay? And it literally, if you, I watched the, every single year on Shark Week, I watched that dude did the documentary what was that one babe the, the shark documentary she's not listening jaws, um jaws no it's a documentary and the dude ended up dying after he made the documentary young guy really good dude uh steven spielberg's jaws was the was the auschwitz of for sharks it was i'm just saying i'm just oh saying it. sorry <laughs> i don't know what to say to that one man okay. that's that's wow yeah. no i know i Let's kinda drink. i know <laughs> there's a bridge <laughs> I tried to. You crossed it. I mean, that's fair, man. You you took a dive for sure. Uh, we're talking about sharks here, and you, Steven Spielberg. Let's let's take a moment to reflect on the right. other films he made, and okay. then let's go back to the Auschwitz shark reference. Yeah. A hundred million uh, sharks, Sam. A hundred million. A hundred million sharks. It's a lot of sharks die, and I want to know how many of those go into my my cans of tuna, and. <laughs> And I'm thinking, because I eat a lot of tuna, and I, I I like to think I might be getting a little shark fin in it, and you know, a little side, 
little bonus, little get my dick working or whatever oh, shark well, fin does. Well, that, that's what that's what you're missing, guys, because I think the real reason people eat shark fin soup is because it gives uh, men a little bit of virility. Isn't that yeah, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, I don't know much about uh, medicine, um, but last I heard, uh, rhino har- horns and shark fins give me big boners. Also, bear gallbladders, especially go. when it's paired with Levitra. But um, <laughs> you know, you, you got to have it, it. They work hand in hand. One activates right. when you have the other, right? Right. Yeah. Or Cialis. Yeah. Oh man, a couple of comments here. Uh, <laughs> James says, "I love sharks. I think they are majestic creatures, just like snakes, yeah. and misunderstood." <laughs> thanks, thanks for that, James. That's that's amazing. No, James. I'll tell you what, I agree with the shark thing. Snakes are just gross. Don't come near me with a snake. And there's no way. I know James. If he saw a snake, he would run faster than anyone away from that snake. So nice try, James. All nice right. Fucking- so Mr. Uh, uh, Jess, uh, head mod Jess says, here's an idea. Stay out of the ocean. Holy shit. <laughs> now, I'm. why are we swimming there? Why? That's my question. Why are human beings swimming in open water? What kind yeah. of psycho swims mm-hmm. in a lake? That's what I want to know. Um, I love it when I'm swimming in a lake and I can feel like a, a felled tree on my oh, feet. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> yeah. that's one of the greatest feelings in the world because I'm like, why is it slippery and why is it grabbing my I, ankle? Yeah, <laughs> it reminds any... me of being a child. Uh, yeah, no, it seems like no one's watched any Friday the Thirteenth movies and they don't know what can happen when you sl- swim in a lake. So I don't know. Yeah. People are crazy. Well, when you when you boat in a lake. Uh, Kevin O'Leary's wife might fucking run you over with her yacht. So that oh, also that's true. could be a possibility <laughs> that's too. True. That's Another true. reason not to be in a lake. Yeah, let's pour yeah. one out for our, for our dragon. A couple more comments here, guys. Uh, Mr. Doopy says, on the same t- uh, token, a shark merely had a negative incident to make that soup. It w- <laughs> It would backfire. <laughs> uh, Kevin Hanks <laughs> says, uh, Jaws also ruined movies. It was the first blockbuster that turned what uh, what was a director's medium into a producer's medium. Actually, Kevin Hanks is 100% right here. Uh, Jaws was the first kind of Western blockbuster movie. Like they, They've always had big movies, but nothing on the scale of what uh, Jaws uh, did for the, you know, for, for films in general. Yeah, it was like the what the Jerry Bruckheimer of his of his time. It was all sensationalized and action and gore. Absolutely, absolutely. And then whatever the hell he wanted to do with the storyline didn't matter. We're like, let's just show this fake shark jumping into boats every two seconds, even mm-hmm. though they're in lakes. It's like, all right, you lost me. We did get you some some good quotes though out of that movie. We have uh, we're gonna need a, bi- a bigger boat. Everybody remembers that, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, and then um, they said like the the shark had dead eyes, like a doll's eyes, kind of like Sam's eyes right now. <laughs> I'll take it. And I'll also have to admit something. I the first time I watched Jaws was last year. Well, that's really. Yeah, wow. I was getting really worried about uh, shark welfare and, and petitioning the Australian government to uh, rename <laughs> shark attacks. And I figured I really needed to see what all the fuss was about. Yeah. So I watched the movie. Turns out Richard Dreyfus gets me going. <laughs> and uh, let me Does tell you. Does he look like your gym teacher? <laughs> he's got he's got some great thighs that he does right? have great thighs yeah yeah, yeah. And wears a sweatband around his waist it was weird i All don't right. know that's richard dreyfus in shorts it's you won't forget it that's for sure i haven't i love it i love it all right, right, let's move on. All right, so we got we got to downshift a little bit because now we we're a serious news show here, gentlemen. Yes, we are a serious news show. <laughs> we got to talk about some world issues. Oh, uh, man. So we had some activity in Haiti. Um, the yeah. president of Haiti was assassinated. Uh, not was it this week? Was, was yeah. It, yeah, was it was it wasn't too long ago. So the president of Haiti, the leader of the country, was assassinated this week. And as it turns out, the more this investigation is is ongoing into the strange incident, uh, all sorts of weird people are involved. There's um, there's law enforcement officials from the U.S., and now it turns out that there's other officials in the Haitian government. Uh, What is going on over there in Haiti? It's a real dogs of war situation. It's crazy. Yeah, I just... I feel like maybe we forgot about Haiti for a while. And then like America was like, you know what? Nothing bad has happened in Haiti for a bit. Let's just kill their prime prime minister or president. I, Is it prime minister or president? It's president, but it's they president. do. Yeah, it's president. But I believe they do have a prime minister as well. Much like Russia. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's one of those republics. Yeah. But, uh, you know, 
people, every year they deal with an earthquake, uh, a tropical storm, uh, extreme poverty, uh, it, it, unbelievable crime. And then uh, we're just like, you know what? Let's dump on them again. Kill their prime minister or president for no reason. Like, I don't know what there was. Well, to pretty do. sure there's a reason, Justin. Well, oh, what was it? Did America realize that some of their oil ended up under their sand? No, <laughs> no. Someone happened? wanted power who was not in power. I think that's like a pure reason enough. Right. But my question is like, unless it was to bring freedom over for some of their oil, I don't know really what the benefit would be to uh, switch power in Haiti. It's not really like a like like when you play the game Risk, like I don't know if Haiti's a stronghold. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't I don't I don't buy that the American government was behind this. Oh. I, think, I don't I think it this was, you know, uh, disaffected uh, Haitian people who really want power. Uh, seeing an opportunity to kill the guy in charge, cause turmoil, do whatever needs to be done. But I don't think this came came through another nation's, you know, attack well, service. Man, was it just like U.S. mercenaries then for hire or oh, something fuck like yeah. that? Yeah, I think. I mean, we, that's if that's the legacy of the wars from the Middle East that the U.S. led. It's you know the the power of the mercenary class. Totally, right? absolutely. And it, there are guns for hire. And uh, and that's what happens. I mean, we all watch like Jack Ryan, right? Or Bosch. <laughs> we know stuff happens in Haiti. I don't want to. I play Call of Duty. Much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even know what that is. It's a video game. Yeah. I know. I'm, it's more of a battlefield guy. Oh. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's fucking crazy, right? Like it's 2021 and people are still getting assassinated, and uh, not by the cops. Um, I mean, yeah, three. There's the beat. And and (laughs) yeah, I really I don't think this was state sponsored assassinated leadership. I think this was a guy who thinks, you know, I'm going to kill him. My guy's going to get in charge and I'll be able to exploit the people. But Haiti doesn't have the natural resources. Right, Justin, for it to like make sense. It doesn't have what makes sense unless what people want, like a stronghold next to the Dominican Republic or something. Well, it's turning into like the most high stakes reality TV show we've ever seen in our lives. I don't know. Have you watched 90 Day Fiance? <laughs> yeah. Haiti Haiti needs to catch up, honestly. Haiti needs a break, man. Haiti needs a goddamn well, Vera break. Vera raises something kind of interesting. Like, it's not like the current or the, the assassinated president of Haiti was like an angel, you know? No, this guy was into some shady shit. Absolutely. You know, just like the assassination of JFK, it's totally justified. Yes. To become (laughs) the head. Thanks for getting it, Mark. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I mean, it was. That's the thing, is it was. Hey, man. Well, I'm not getting into that. (laughs) Don't screw over Teamsters, and you'd still be here. (laughs) Yeah, we've all seen the Irish. Uh, Right. (laughs) All right. Um, I mean, as it's kind of a sad situation. It's really too bad for Haiti, but um, you know, it's 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 a tough gig. Being president of Haiti is a tough yeah. gig. Let's leave it at that. Uh, I know you're. I know you're managing the chat. I just want to, I just want to give one show to one fucking line here. Uh, Kevin Hank says, "I bet Wycliffe Jean is happy he didn't win the presidency." Oh man, <laughs> poor guy. Hey, the, I, I love the Fujis, by the way. I just want to let everybody in chat hey, know we that love I them. love the Fujis. Yeah, we are Fuji fans, okay? <laughs> Let's do it. All right. By the way, Haitian Assassination sounds like the greatest WWE wrestling name ever. Ever, yeah. okay? And coming into the ring, the Haitian Assassination. <laughs> I had this weird fucking dream where, uh, you know, it was like a gathering of superheroes, but like the secretary sent an email to the wrong person instead of like Bruce Banner, it was Bruce Buffer. And I don't know. They all just fought each other. Well, yeah. That's, hey, that's a you know, there's dream. a funny story about Bruce Buffer fighting uh, an actual UFC fighter in an elevator with, uh, with uh, Dana White in the elevator. Wow. No, I'm kidding you. The UFC fighter interrupted their their trip up the elevator. A conversation with Daniel. I want to get paid, and Bruce is like, "Hey, I'm talking here." And the UFC fighter pushes him and goes, "Fuck you!" And doesn't know that Bruce actually trained in boxing, and they got in a fist fight in front of Dana White. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. All right, we can move on now. I just. All right. Fun fact. Fun fact. Let's get to uh, some important stuff because this next story was. Uh, uh, 
people requested this. People wanted to uh, hear us talk about this, gentlemen, uh, because we skipped it last week. Last week, I talked about the anniversary of Roswell, the Roswell, uh, New Mexico alien uh, yeah. crash landing. We really kind of did a deep dive on that, and we skipped this story. So this week, we're going to talk about it. Um, we're going to talk about the five paintings you should never have in your house because they are haunted. Okay. You guys yeah. ready for this? So, all right. So is this gonna, real? Like, how do we know? Like, uh, is there any facts to back up these things are harmful? There's yeah, lots of we got facts. got facts when things are haunted. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> <there's not. laughs> so we're going to go through these paintings one by one. So the first on screen right now, gentlemen, and yeah. the chat oh, will be able yeah. to see this. So it's called The Hands Resist Him. The hands Bonnie resistant. Henry would love this one. <laughs> this is the genesis of the glory hole. That is 100% a burn victim glory hole is what it is. Right oh, there. boy. Oh, boy. Uh, is that I mean, bad to say burn? Like, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that combination <laughs> of words. They photo, Mark. <laughs> wow. uh, all right. So um, this is one of the most famous haunted paintings in history. It was p painted by Bill Stoneham as a way to express yeah. his feelings about adoption. And the image shows a terrifying-looking doll with black eyes, like a doll's eyes, uh, beside a boy who stares directly into the viewer's eyes. So this mm. painting is looking straight at you. This really, uh, it's not really centered in the screen right now. I really apologize to the chat. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the first painting here. The, the, the next painting is called The Anguished Man. So uh, sounds like me. Yeah. So it's it's just a <laughs> face of someone yelling. It seems like so it's called the anguished man. Uh, so the owner Sean Robinson claims that this painting, known as the anguished man, has a, a particular terrifying backstory. So goes the tale. The anonymous and disturbed paint uh, painter allegedly stirred his own blood into the paint as he worked on the image. Soon after completing the piece, the artist committed suicide. Strange activity has haunted the anguished man ever since. Wait, hold on. So we're saying that a dude who makes paintings with his own blood and then killed himself uh, is because the painting was haunted and not because that dude might be a little bit unstable, like some Van Gogh shit going on right there. Like, that's, that's what we're going with? I mean, the, this guy was just disturbed, and it, his spirit or his energy or his essence stayed in the painting, and whoever owns the painting afterwards, oh, okay. had, yeah, yeah, like they, they suffer the paranormal effects of the painting. I mean, it's beautiful. I love the color in this. <laughs> It's a yeah. masterpiece. Do we know how much it sell, sold for? Probably not much. I mean, can can you even give these things away? That's my that's oh, my yeah. question. That's oh, my question. Yeah. For sure, there's some psychopath dude. There's women who write love letters to serial killers. Are you kidding me? Someone will buy that. Oh yeah, I'm sure someone will pay good money for that. That's a good point. Um, moving on, <laughs> the crying boy, the crying boy. So does this tear tearful portrait catch oh. your eye? Good news. <laughs> you can actually score yourself a copy of Bruno Bragolin Amadio's Crying Boy Print, one of its uh, numerous knockoffs. But be careful, prospective buyer. Your acquisition may backfire. The curse of the crying boy dates back to 1985 when an article br uh, in the British tabloid, The Sun, told of a South Yorkshire house fire. The home homeowner alleg allegedly possessed a copy of the teary-eyed portrait at the time. While the blaze obliterated the home, the weepy print survived. So this is a painting that will survive a house fire. It will destroy everything so, in your house. Uh, but I'm hearing this, Mark, and what I'm hearing is a print of an original print painting was in a house <laughs> that caught fire and it survived. So if I own another print, this fucking ghost is going to teleport from that burned fire print to my print. I don't buy it. I mean, I don't no. buy it. I'm not on board with that. I will have... A room full of crying boys, uh, just to prove this wrong. You heard it here. For, you heard it here for here first, folks. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this experiment. We're gonna send you thirty-two uh, crying boys around your room, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, and my girlfriend will not like it. No, no, no. <laughs> She's so... used to me being the only crying boy. Yeah. If anyone has a line on crying boys, send it uh, to uh, our Discord server. By the way, join us in Discord. 
Uh, this is where we uh, share stories, where we chat all week, where we do all sorts of right. stuff. Uh, I'm gonna post up the link here for Discord. It's like a, it's kind of like a Slack <laughs> or a server where you can come and join us and talk about um, Sam Tonning, the guest on our show, who wants to be surrounded with crying boys. Oh no, I, yeah. that's gonna be the pull quote so far. I just read one of the comments here, and uh, I don't know who Tyson is, but I love this. I'm assuming it's someone we know. <laughs> What does it say? What does it say? Uh, Jess, if you look at the painting, The Crying Boy, it kind of looks like Tyson, and I'm not trying to be mean. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. that's my son. He's talking about Jesus Jesus. Hey, we're, we're getting Jesus. really personal. Hold on. All right. I'm about to pull the plug on this whole story. This already we're haunted in this. We're <laughs> trying to break this down. And it's... Oh, I love Rob, Mr. Doopy, Rob. I'd buy a thousand of these crying boy paintings and cover my house to fireproof it. That's a good call, especially with the wired wildfires. He must live in Kamloops. Hilarious. Yo, know, but uh, for real though, listen uh, to what Mark says. Join our Discord because if you join up and you find articles you want us to talk about, yeah. uh, we will put them in the show. So Vera Bobo, for instance, she uh, found a really good one about the sharks. So we're uh, like, you know what? Let's put it on the show. So if you want to be even more part of the show than just in the chat and right. be part of uh, the actual production and the uh, the substance of the show, uh, hit up the Discord, submit your articles, and uh, and we'll shout you out every single time. Also, please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Oh, also, if you're watching from the link on Facebook uh, or Instagram, uh, but you haven't logged into YouTube, you can't comment. So like, you don't even count as a viewer. So log in. There should be an option at the top. I know April was getting confused about this one uh, and other people have too been messaging me. So make sure you log into the YouTube app. Uh, it should be right there for you to do. And then you can comment and uh, interact with us. All right. This is great. Perfect. Contractual obligations over. I'm glad I killed the fun. And you, and you were watching the w, the Waiting for Trivia show live on YouTube every Thursday, 9 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. All right, number four, Portrait of Samantha King by Richard King. This is the next yeah. picture, guys. So this is a, a lovely little uh, lady here. So this deceptively cheery painting of by Richard King hangs in Austin, Texas's Driscoll Hotel and carries with it a haunting legend. So goes the tale. The young girl featured in King's paintings is Samantha Houston, the daughter of a U.S. senator who fell to her death while staying at the Driscoll, this hotel. Maybe let's stop painting pictures of people who die like right away, horrible deaths. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, man. Give them an outlet. Hey, what about the Sopranos when uh, Tony commissioned that painting of Pi Oh My, you know, after... All right. That's too... What? Yeah, I mean, what? it's... Yeah, him with a horse. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Him. A I've, horse. I've never watched The Sopranos. I'm. I'm, I'm oh my god! I haven't seen a single episode. Jesus Christ! And I thought not watching Jaws was controversial. Yeah, dude, dude, do yourself a favor. Jesus Christ! You just lost all credibility. Yeah, I haven't seen a single ep. <laughs> that I haven't seen a single episode of The Sopranos, and I think The Wire was boring. Anyway, moving on. Wow. Um, so this, the fifth one is called "The Dead Mother" by Edvard Munch. So uh, uh, classic, yes. Cla th this guy Munch, uh, he did the Munch. scream. Munch, sorry, he did the, he did the scream. A very very yeah. famous painting. So this this paint th this guy Edward Munch is well known for his dark and moody expressionist style paintings like the scream. Yet only one of his works is haunted. The dead mother, painted in honor of Munch's mother, yeah. who died of tuberculosis, tragic, is said to bear the remnants of its tragic history. So just looking at this painting, you, we kind of feel haunted just looking at it, right? It almost looks like a sketch, you know? Like, you see, like, uh, great sketches of, of, of beautiful works, and this d looks less a painting and more, like, the the anguished sketchings of, of, of a sad man remembering childhood, right? There you go. Yeah. All you right. paint this, Sam? Honest to God. <laughs> I mean, my mom's not dead. Yet. Uh, all right, so <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Fucking deadpan. Deadpan. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've uh, too many depressing stories. Let's talk about a, a good news story, guys. Because <laughs> this has been a bummer. The last two stories have been a real bummer. Um, this story is fun. So this, this, this is not, it's kind of a Florida man story, but we're moving over a couple of states. We're mm. going to talk about Louisiana man. So this guy, Louisiana man, bored with traffic, jumps off 100-foot bridge into alligator-infested water, barely survives, and gets arrested. Well, so you, 
immediately are like, I need details. I need fucking details about this story because it's very sensational. I was like, what do you mean he jumps off a bridge? So the guy was stuck in traffic for too long and he's clearly suffering from adult ADHD, maybe a little OCD, which by the way, I dealt with my opener for my, uh, for my trip up north. I was dealing with a dude with severe ADHD and uh, I could totally have seen him jumping out of the car to jump off a bridge because he was bored with traffic. So I, I started, I really resonated with this story. But then you find out this guy, when he jumped in the water, he realized the current was too strong. He couldn't, it took him an hour and a half to get back to land. <laughs> Who thinks it's a good idea to jump into water that brown? No doubt. You know, like, like, you I just saw that fucking photo. Like, this, this guy's ridiculous. Dude, I mean, I'm not fucking with the Fraser River, would you? Well, I mean, just to eat fish from, but, like... <laughs> I don't I'm know. Not... This is crazy for down in Louisiana, and I get it. There's a lot of dirt in the water, and he, he jumps off and uh, gets arrested. That's the thing that got me when reading this: is he got arrested after? What was it like? Fucking cops came with guns when they dragged him ashore. Well, to be fair, he said, "I borrowed a boat." And what else, Mark? Was there something else? So some other mode of transportation to get back. So he stole them. <laughs> right. So he, he sorry. So I went uh, away from keyboard there for a second, leaving the guys with uh, with zero producer. Uh, the um, so this guy was bored in traffic. He jumped out of his car, jumped off the bridge. He swam for about an hour and a half, uh, got to shore somewhere and then stole a boat to try to get back to where his car was. And oh. yeah. So and uh, I guess the cops obviously Fuck. maybe had a problem with this and they yeah. greeted him on the shoreline with uh with guns drawn and uh, ready to put him in handcuffs. I think if you can swim for an hour and a half, the boat's yours. You know, I can't swim for fucking five minutes, mostly because I can't swim. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think he, he deserves to keep the boat and not get arrested. I side with the Louisiana uh, bridge jumping, boat stealing, tattooed ADHD men. Right on. This guy's going to have a million followers on Instagram in like a day, and he's going to be represented by some sort of agency yeah. like the yeah. Gorilla Glue chick. Like yeah, the Gorilla be the Glue. Tempe improv next week. <laughs> yeah, no, he's going to do a Just for Last Gala. He's going to do a Just for Last Gala now because he's of his following. Him and uh, Miranda last. Sings. Yeah. Me. I, I heard and Miranda things are going to save comedy forever. Cool, cool, cool. I cool. heard. He, I heard he's booked on the debaters next week. So good for him. Good for him. <laughs> I love the debaters. Book me. Please email me. <laughs> All right. Um, it's it, Hey, guys, it, we're having fun talking about haunted paintings and people oh, throwing yeah. themselves in the river. It, it is 9.50. So, I mean, we, oh. we only have 10 minutes left in the show. Oh, and we man. have lots of story to we talk do. about. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep going. Let's, let's keep, keep going. going. All right. So let's talk next story here. So uh, it was a big, uh, big deal in uh, baseball. Justin, you're going to have to kind of take the lead on this because there was uh, this Japanese player who apparently I guess the Japanese are playing baseball now. So this is, this is news to me. We're and um, <laughs> and uh, well, I mean, good for them. I'm, I'm thrilled that the Japanese are playing baseball. But uh, do you want to say up next? Mark learns that Dominicans play baseball. <laughs> I'm not a sports guy, you know. I'm not a sports yeah. guy, so this is all this is all new to me. So yeah, Justin, what, what's going on with this new Japanese player? Do you want to say his name first off? Otani. No, say his full name. His Shohei Otani. Okay, there you go. Because I didn't. I'm so scared to uh, mispronounce it because that's all I do on this show is mispronounce names. Shohei Otani. Uh, he's the first player in Major League Baseball history, and remember, Major League Baseball goes back almost what 200 years, right? Uh, He's the first player to ever pitch and hit in an all-star game. He was selected as a starting pitcher and a starting uh, nine uh, in the hitting order uh, in the major leagues. An amazing athlete. He's huge. He's jacked. He's uh, But he looks like a 12-year-old boy out there with his, yeah. like, he's literally scared wow. in the moment, like, looking like, gee, like, what the heck? And he's somehow one of the best hitters and pitchers in the league uh that's never been done before it's amazing it's an amazing story and they bled it for everything that it was and put an amazing amount of pressure on this guy and he did well in the home run derby but he had a chance to be the first uh japanese player first off to win the um the home run derby but he also had the opportunity to be the first guy to pitch and hit in the all-star game huge story and then you know what happened 
uh, someone woke up the Dominican Republic and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. decided to swoop in your Blue Jays uh, elite player, by the way, your Toronto Blue Jays, tip of my cap to you guys. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was like, not on my watch, and he took the MVP out of Otani's hands, so we're happy about that. But great story that uh, he can come over from Japan and uh, elevate the game and, uh, you know, in a positive light from all the steroids and juiced baseballs. I got to be honest, Justin, I stopped stopped paying attention when you described him as, like, jacked and then looks like a 12-year-old. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. We just got demonetized. For sure. On well, that hey, one. I'm I just did. I'm just repeating what I heard here. Uh, man. We just got an email from YouTube, so we are demonetized. Um, <laughs> but this is late in the show. Usually, we get it around 15 minutes in, 20 minutes in. So, we, uh, but we do need. You're, we're going to get a check to you, YouTube. So we're very sorry for all the things we said, but we are demonetized. Thanks, uh, Sam. Thanks, guys. Uh, well, anyways, uh, Sam said actually he's just happy that the Major League Baseball is allowing Japanese players to play in the Major Leagues. So I mean, that's know, pretty good. 2021 yeah you know it's, it's a far cry from uh the days when uh the major league baseball would have uh, the negro league day do you remember that they'd have the negro no league i day. actually i'll be honest with you justin i don't remember the negro leagues i'm 36 <laughs> now listen to me. what they would do is they would have negro league day and teams would wear the negro league jerseys from that league and almost uh like celebrate their uh yeah. their racism and yeah. then they would make money off of the jerseys of the players they wouldn't allow into their league. So yeah. I think they're trying to steer the ship in the right direction now. And it's kind of nice to see. Well, I know that was a harsh explanation. No. I had You had to let me turn the corner, but you didn't. And now I did. So no, it's I'm okay, man. I just found out that next week the Atlanta <laughs> Braves are having Mr. Bojangles night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's okay. Cleveland, the Cleveland no-name team uh, figured it out. I think Major League Baseball is turning a corner here. Cleveland, you know I mean? the, the Cleveland Baseball Stadium has one of the coolest things. They got, like, cheap cans of beer, like just regular old cans of beer. I remember watching them play the Mariners and in Cleveland and just getting shit-faced on $4 beer. Yeah. At a, base, at a professional baseball, an MLB game, $4 beer is the best thing ever. Dude, you should have been here for when we covered the minor league team that had a uh, double pint uh, beer baseball bat glasses for a dollar. Yeah, because yeah, that's going to work when you get baseball bat and beer. And glass, glass baseball and bat. Glass, we said that. Yeah. Like, we said oh, that. No. <laughs> yeah, that, wow. was, that was a great idea. Awesome yeah. idea. Fucking bloodbath is what it was. Anyway. All right, boys. Uh, yeah, man. So yeah. Major League Baseball fucking doing everything they can to prove that they are not racist anymore and they playing not, the no, at the forefront. The number doing of great. black players, it continues to plummet, but not racist at all. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, God bless them. They're, they're doing great. They're really trying hard. They're really trying yeah. hard. Uh, yeah. let, let's uh, skip over to uh, one of our favorite segments, uh, gentlemen, Billionaire Beats. Billionaire. We got to get a fucking song for this. We got to yeah. get a jingle for yeah, this. We, so you guys know, the our audience knows that we love to talk about these people. The billionaires, the people who are better than us, who are smarter than us, who are yeah. richer than us in every way. The billionaires. And in Billionaire Beat News, uh, Richard Branson, and we covered this last week, he decided to take his virgin... Uh, galactic? Little, yeah, galactic spaceship up into space... Um, before Bezos, beating Bezos, because Jeff Bezos, of course, the CEO or the soon-to-be non-CEO of Amazon, uh, he plans to put himself on a rocket and shoot himself into space, but Richard Branson beat him by more than a week. Yes. But but there is, some there is some criticism because, I mean, of course, Richard Branson has the, has the coolest crew, has the best-looking sh ship, has the best looking people flying with him, mm -hmm. but people sa are saying that he did not fly high enough. He only went into, you know, near Earth orbit. He actually did not go into space. That's what, pe that's what people are saying. I got, I got to say something here. And sorry, Justin, I know you like to lead. You're the man in charge. But I, I just got to say here, uh, anyone criticizing Richard Branson that you haven't made it to space? <laughs> if if that's like the, you know, the hill you want to die on is this billionaire didn't make it close enough to space. Grow the fuck up. Yeah. yeah. Get a hobby. Pay attention to yourself. Yeah. Because you're at best, you're a millionaire. Okay. There you and go. you can do better. Yeah. 
There you so go. You haven't even made it to Kamloops, probably. If you're fucking <laughs> arguing that we didn't make it to fucking yeah, space. Like, who the fuck does this? Oh, wow. You have binoculars and you look at the sun, you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, yeah, Richard like... Branson's a failure as a man. We yeah. all know this. What kind of guy names his stuff virgin? Doesn't matter. <laughs> and would I take going to space or would I take $200 billion? I don't know. Probably $200 billion so I could buy everything Richard Branson has and literally shoot it to space. Yeah. There Nine go. days earlier, go fuck yourself. Didn't make it to space, go fuck yourself. No, Sorry. what I like is. That's all I got. What I like is you got Elon doing his thing and then you got Bezos going, what's going on over there? You know what? Let's beat him. Let's go to space. And you know what? I'll be on the ship and we'll go up there looking like Lego men, just me and one other dude, right? Like just Jeff Bezos. Like, you know, he calls himself Jeffrey too. Like, oh, my name's Jeffrey. Yeah, and you I'm know who else called himself Jeffrey? Epstein. My name's Jeffrey. And I, Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah. There you but go. If, look, and Bezos is taking up some 18 year old Dutch kid. Yeah. He is. Yeah, and that's... Then someone who spent 28 million bucks on the lottery on the seat beside him. And you know, it was Elon just trolling him. Right. Yeah. Anyway, but then fucking Branson is like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, is there a chance we could beat him? Can we just put something together real quick? Like, yeah. we got all this money, right? Can we just put something together. Also, can we make it look sleek? Can we look like the hottest F1 racing team that has ever been assembled? And then he decides to bring a bunch of dime pieces with him. So just in case something happens, he's like, I went out with the hottest crew ever, and yeah. Jeff Bezos went with one 18-year-old Dutch kid looking like a Lego man, and uh, Richard Branson for the win. That's what I'm saying right now. Richard Branson for the win. All right. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather spend more time paying attention to what's in front of me, like, uh, you know, mounting a debt and, uh, and aspirational dreams of one day making a billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds awesome. <laughs> Sam, I'm glad, by the way, that you're, you're Team Branson, because we're, we've been back and forth between Musk and yeah. Bezos, but like we've declared ourselves on this show, we are clearly Team Richard Branson. So. Oh, man, like this is ridiculous. I don't, I don't even want to reveal like which billionaire I'm most for, but let me, let me tell you, their name, their, the family name starts with an S, ends with an R, and in the middle is Ackle. So uh, if you don't know what that is, that's Sackler, that's Purdue Pharma, that's Oxy. 100% behind oh, yeah. them. I think they managed yeah. marketing to a level <laughs> that even Richard Branson can't get behind, okay? Holy Let's talk shit. about the real heroes. Koch it's Brothers. It's still legal. Sackler. Still I love legal. it, man. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Let's, let's, right. Billionaire let's... beat. No one beats a guy, a family that can literally kill hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people and get away with it. I don't give a fuck what Elon Musk does. Beat that. Yeah, make forty That's billion in point. five years. That's a good point. Fuck the Rothschilds. That's right? real power, man. Yeah, fuck the Rothschilds, the Sacklers. The... I will never criticize the Rothschilds because they make beautiful champagne. They make beautiful Bordeaux. They have some of the best estates and wine in the world. So all power to them but yeah the sacklers man the true power billionaires wow that's the uh, power bottom billionaires if you ask me ooh. they just got fucked with a four and a half billion okay whatever i could go on here i'm not gonna do it i like this i just want i'm sorry go ahead Mark. No, i was just gonna say we we have a new billionaire kind of uh challenger in the arena we have we, we, we've been talking about musk we've been talking about bezos we've been talking about branson but now we got the sacklers that we can talk about so that's a new kind of thing that we can add to billionaire beat well, I'm just glad anytime we can add crazy. another. I like when we can add another wrestler to WrestleMania in the billionaire beat fucking ring of honor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, literally virgins fucking dude just came from the top rope and elbow drop Bezos in the nuts. And I fucking love it. Hell and yeah. Bill yeah. Gates is like Undertaker. He's like gone, but he's going to come back at any moment and just be like, by the way, I just fucking figured out that I own all the fucking farmland. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's just boom. It's going to be great. This is All the right. greatest segment in internet fucking history. It's crazy because uh, The Undertaker is probably a better husband than Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. So good. By the way, that oh, just man. won the chat. I know that we don't usually involve in the chat, but Sam just won the chat from the fucking show. So oh, pick man. it up, chat. Yeah, pick it up, chat. You guys... Usually you guys are funnier than the guests, but not tonight. <laughs> um, okay, so um, it's ten. It's ten p.m. Pacific, gentlemen. The show is pretty much over. Oh. We're gonna end on this last story. Is everybody okay with doing one more story? 
I'm in, baby. One more. All right, one more story. And I just want to say thank you for uh, to Sam for joining us joining us thank tonight. Thank you. Yeah, it's been an amazing, been great, amazing show. It's so much yeah. fun. Uh, and remind everybody that we are live every Thursday, 9 p.m. here Pacific on YouTube uh, doing this. And we also have clips. So we put out clips all through the week on our YouTube channel, and we appreciate your support. All, yeah. we, all we need you to do is watch the thing once and just like it. And maybe share yeah. it if you feel so inclined. Meh. Meh. Just share it. Just you know, share like, it. How far that goes? Yeah. It really goes a long way for us. Yeah. And uh, But I do want to thank everybody in the chat. James, I see Pyra there. Great to see you, Pyra. I don't know if you saw, but we talked about your Jaws story. Uh, the uh, Everybody that's – Mr. Doopy, uh, Vera Bobo, everybody that's been in the chat tonight, thank you so much for – uh, keeping the conversation going. So this yeah. last story, gentlemen, is a great news story. Oh, man. So our boy, the man, Joe Exotic, is getting out <laughs> early. It's done, baby. He is Service getting out. Time. He is Well, he, I don't know if he's getting out just yet, but it looks like they're, they are reevaluating his prison sentence, and they're going to give him less time. So we, our boy, Joe Exotic, is going to make it out of prison, maybe in our lifetime, and come back into media what do you guys think about that go ahead sam i'll go i'll go right now i mean time it's it's like you look at his right arm and you see the tattoo he has on there and it's not too often you see a guy with a unabomber tattoo get out of jail early right yeah. so i think this is a real <laughs> yeah it's a real win for justice no, i just... don't know anything about joe exotic i never watched the show all i know is like wasn't like a nick cage supposed oh. to be in a movie or something about you never him. watched tiger king no man i missed that i'm like so far out of the zeitgeist Dude. it's ridiculous well, i don't feel bad about not watching uh sopranos or the wire now no you shouldn't man i spent a lot of time watching uh antiques road show and uh <laughs> yeah but this is a cool story it's like you know public figures usually get a bum rap when they go to jail right like they're they're punished way harsher than us normies, right? I mean, you watch this guy. If he got busted for, you know, selling an ounce of pot, he'd probably go to jail for like 200 years, unlike, you know, his neighbor, the the young black guy who's only in jail for 45. So I'm glad <laughs> the, the moment of justice no. has truly been served for our reality TV stars. No. All right. Here's what went down. So Joe Exotic has been a pain in the ass for probably – Every single politician, every single fucking lawmaker, every, you know, congressman, councilman, whatever. The guy has an illegal uh, zoo of exotic animals that can kill people. Literally on the documentary, someone had their arm ripped off. OK, he is. Uh, what was he doing? He's paying. He was paying employees with expired Walmart meat products uh feeding is like dude the dude's just crazy but this is like the thing you love the chaos you love the train wreck that's why the documentary went viral but the thing is they really did catch him on some trumped up charges they really did uh well not so what do you call that when the cops in entrapment. entrapment it was entrapment yeah. the whole fucking thing was entrapment uh uh, it was lazy. They put him in jail for like fucking 15, 20 years on an, on trumped up charges. So it really was, you were thinking like a matter of time before he did get out. But here's the thing that kills me. We're going to free Bill Cosby and Joe Exotic and we can't free Britney Spears. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's happening? Like, I think Britney Spears will be released from her conservatorship pretty soon because I don't know if you saw on the news today. But there was some real star power at a rally in California. Uh, uh, Representative Matt Gates was there to lend his support to to Britney Spears. Uh, you know, stand up U.S. Representative Matt Gates is 100 percent behind Britney here. And and you know what? There you go. Free Britney. When, baby, when that guy me. speaks, people listen. Right. When that guy speaks, people listen. Exactly. Also, when that guy's buddy, who happens to be a uh, you know a city clerk, who procures underage women for him people also listen but um allegedly although we're in canada so it doesn't really matter um yeah i, I you know I, I i'm sorry guys i misspoke here i i thought we were talking about joe pesci uh, yeah i got the irishman stuck in my head from earlier so i got oh nothing. scorsese is so mad at you right now um yeah man this is crazy but you know what think about Think about the next three years of Netflix if this guy gets out again. 
Oh, We're talking yeah. about a documentary of a dude who turns men gay just by giving them crystal meth. And that alone, that alone will become that just that reason will be the new bachelor. <laughs> wow. Instead of a, a, a rose, you get a pipe. Just a little glass tube, right? Here you go. Yeah. I, the glass I got... tube. <laughs> this one's for you. I, I choose you. Oh man, that's awesome. I fucking love it, dude. Mark, very good. All right. Very good. Well, right. that that's is uh, the show for us tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That was the WFT show. Uh, any closing remarks, uh, gentlemen? Uh, I just want to say thanks to the chat. Uh, we had a couple like late submissions here. Kevin Hanks says, my favorite line is when they asked the employees if he ever mentioned killing Carol Baskins. And the dude was like, um, yeah, like every day. <laughs> Oh, man, I got to say, um, Ke Kevin Hanks burned me well today. When I was talking about professionalism, he commented on me drinking booze and my coat rack in the back. Made me feel very self-conscious, so much so that I had to spill water on my shirt and take my tie off. It's great. Yeah, well, you know, Kevin Hanks is the epitome of professionalism. Trust me, I've been on the road with him. So, uh, yeah, you should take everything he says very seriously. Absolutely, I will. Um, great comments tonight, man. Guys, I just want you to know, like, your interactions in the chat really helped us go and uh, kept our uh, numbers up. We had 11,000 people watching tonight. And uh, that's just because the activity on the fucking live stream uh, brings people in who uh, wouldn't otherwise have checked it out. So thank you so much. We love you all. We want to give you shout outs. Uh, I think comment of the night, I think, went to either Pyra or Vera Bobo. Uh, you guys were on fire tonight. Uh, just remember, you keep chatting. You keep uh, uh, interacting. We're going to shout you out and uh, join our Discord. Uh, did I miss anything, Mark? No, I think that's it. I'm going to post a last link in Discord here. Okay. Boom. So join us in Discord. It's our secret little uh, clubhouse where we talk all week and uh, prepare for the next show. So join us there. Okay. On behalf of uh, me, Sam, Mark, and uh, everybody else, thank you so much, you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next Thursday. See you later.